Hello, my name is Jonathan. I write a song a day, and I'm an Apple fanboy. I have this wholly irrational, visceral love for the company that's completely at odds with many other aspects of what I believe. For instance, I hate the mass consumption culture we live in and the engines that drive and feed it, and I'm a huge believer in workers' rights. I can't explain how I can believe these things while at the same time feeling warm, fuzzy feelings for one of the biggest corporations in the world, but what can I say? My first computer was an Apple IIe, and nostalgia is a powerful force. So Steve Jobs is a hero of mine. I'm the kind of nerd that periodically sits around watching old Apple product introductions just to watch Steve Jobs do his thing. Like, I'll watch the iPhone introduction over and over and over, in the same way I'll watch Michael Jackson at Motown's 25th anniversary concert. That's right, I just compared Steve Jobs to Michael Jackson. But just as with my love of Apple, there are aspects of Steve Jobs, at least the public image we've come to know, that conflict with what I believe. On an emotional level, when I read stories of how he treat people sometimes, it's just so, so far from how I believe anyone should ever act. I believe in my heart this world needs more empathy and compassion, not more assholes yelling and calling people bozos. And yet, if you watch his Stanford commencement speech or you read stories told by his closest friends, there's a warmth there that you just can't deny. Maybe it's his contradictions that really get me, and maybe it's because they somehow remind me of my own, but his story is just so compelling and his passion was so contagious that I just can't help but love and admire the guy. It's in this context I want to tell you about the time I made Steve Jobs dance. Let me take you back. When I started Song A Day, I was a mostly unemployed freelance songwriter. I had done a jingle for Airbnb. Oh my God, it's Obama. Oh. I had written a rock opera for X-Play on G4 TV, and I had done singing video game reviews for 1UP.com. The beginning of Song A Day coincided quite nicely with the financial crash, and so I was in the midst of a bit of a dry spell. To fill in the gaps, I started entering online video contests. I'd enter 12 contests in 12 days, win two or three of them, and that was my income for the month. One of the contests I entered was a Microsoft jingle competition for Bing. Here is my entry. Bing, bing, bing. It may have been because my closest competition was this guy. I like to bring it, bring it. I like to bring it, bring it. She likes to bring it, bring it. But somehow my entry won. Silly dance and pajama pants and all. A few days later, my phone started blowing up. MG Siegler, a popular tech writer, had written a post on TechCrunch. Bing has succeeded in finding the worst jingle ever. I decided to get revenge by setting his words to music. Jingle is the video is much, much worse. Some guy in pajama pants doing bad interpretive dance And I'm thinking to myself This is what hell must look slash sound like I'm M.G. Siegler This actually began a back and forth that lasted a few days and it blossomed into an internet friendship. From then on, anytime I wrote a song about something tech related, M.G. would post it. So now let's fast forward to June 15th, 2010, the night before Apple's Antennagate press conference. I had just found out that I lost a video competition for Klondike. I'm not working for the pirate anymore. And I was feeling kind of depressed about it. I was nursing my wounds and reading the latest on Antennagate. Antennagate was headline news on all the 24-hour cable networks. To me, the whole thing seemed blown way out of proportion. So here, on the eve of Apple's first ever defensive press conference, I decided to make a song. If you don't want an iPhone 4, don't buy it. If you bought one and you don't like, bring it back. With the song uploaded, I sent the link to MG and I went to bed. The next morning, there was an email in my inbox. Hello, from Apple. I liked today's song and had a question for you. Is there somewhere I can reach you by phone? I ignored this email and got into the shower. I was pretty sure somebody was trolling me. My shower is interrupted by a phone call. I'd been doxxed by Apple. To this day, I do not know how they got my phone number. A PR rep named Steve Dowling wanted to know if they could use my Antennagate song to open the press conference, which was happening in two hours. After a long, stunned silence, I managed to say, yes, that would be acceptable. Cut to the press conference, everyone is seated, my video, the video that I'd made the night prior in my bedroom in a few hours, played, and then Steve Jobs comes out on stage and says, Good morning. Thanks for joining us here. We saw that on YouTube this morning and couldn't help but uh, want to share it. Later on, I talked to Steve Dowling again. 
He told me that as my song was playing, Steve was just off stage and he was dancing. If you watch the video of the conference, you can clearly see him bopping a little bit as he walks out on stage. So I made Steve Jobs dance. Steve Jobs, one of my all time biggest heroes, weird, awesome, enigma of a dude, Steve Jobs, listened to my song, decided to use it at a press conference and proceeded to dance to it. I was basically floating on air for like a month. Ever since this happened, I've thought a lot about why and how Steve decided to use my video. Let me remind you once again that we are talking about Steve Jobs here. The master marketer, the consummate showman, whose name is synonymous with demanding absolute perfection from everybody, who sweats every single detail down to the very last. And he decided to use my silly song and video that I made in my bedroom to open up the first and only defensive press conference Apple has ever had. Doesn't that strike you as a really strange thing to do at such a crucial moment? For a long time, I had this theory that Steve was so thoroughly disgusted by the overblown media outrage that he used my song as a sort of fuck you to everyone covering the mess. As if he was saying, I care so little about this bullshit that I'm just gonna let this random dude song speak for me. But then I saw this interview with Apple's former VP of marketing, Allison Johnson. In this clip, she's asked to describe a few of her most memorable moments working with Steve. After talking about witnessing Steve's reaction to the Beatles finally being allowed on iTunes, she tells this story. Um, when he was so sad and so angry about um, the antenna gate issue and how that was getting portrayed and, and uh, you know, the, kind of his, his core uh, leadership team, product and marketing leadership team were sitting around the table and, and, and he was pounding the table and said, this is not the company I want to be. This is not what, what we are building. Um, we don't want people to think about us this way. Again, I mean, this was, Beatles was tears, this was sobbing. So, you know, did he deeply care about that company and was it one and the same as him? Uh, without question. If he was that upset, if this was such an emotional thing for him, it completely changes his relationship to the song. It wasn't anger that prompted him to use it. It wasn't a fuck you. It was a thank goodness. In this context, the song served as a sort of emotional relief valve. It was silly and light, but it also laid out his argument concisely and with a catchy tune. I'd written the song with no expectations. I was just writing about what I actually thought about the situation. It just happened to line up perfectly with how he felt about it too. So I think about it this way. One day, Steve Jobs was in a boardroom sobbing his eyes out about Antenna Gate. The next day, he was coming out on stage dancing about it. For an Apple fanboy and Steve Jobs admirer like me, it doesn't get any better than that. Thank you for watching uh, the story of how I made Steve Jobs dance. If you enjoyed this video, you might consider watching a few of the other ones that I've made that are like it. Um, you are not a content creator about the word content and why I think it's a stupid word. Um, you can watch the video about the excuse a day, the excuse a day joke, Jack Dolgan and his year long song a day parody project. Uh, you can also watch the video about this old internet character that I had named GameJew. If, uh, you can also, um, become an ongoing supporter of me and my projects, videos like this, my song a day project, and so on and so forth. You can, um, help me out on Patreon. You can become a Patreon supporter for as little as, as 25 cents a week, and it really helps me with the day-to-day-ness of being an independent uh, person who makes things on the internet. Creator. So yeah, thanks again for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And Jupiter and I both say, I do. We bid you, I do. I do.